Protein purification is a process wherein you isolate a protein component from disrupted cells. Purifying specific proteins from a genetically unaltered organism is very challenging. However, when you control the gene for the protein you wish to purify, there are many tricks to simplify the task. The workhorse method is histag. The sequence his 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 on the N or C terminus of a protein is the histag. This short sequence of amino acids binds to nickel ion. After mobilizing nickel in a column using the ligand NTA, you can affinity purify proteins with this tag. The peptide binds tightly and specifically to nickel NTA, allowing you to wash out all the other proteins. The protein is then released from the column by elution with imidazole. This is the molecule matching the side chain of histidine. You must add imidazole at high concentrations, but it will compete for nickel ions and, and release the protein. Histag is just one of a suite of affinity purification techniques you can use. For histag, the resin is nickel NTA. Glutathione S-transferase, maltose binding protein, and chitin binding protein are small E. coli proteins that have commercially available resins as well. Often, fusing these proteins to a protein you wish to purify will improve its solubility and expression. Additionally, there are a number of peptide tags that bind specifically to antibodies. Immobilizing the antibodies to a column or to magnetic beads provides another means of specifically isolating proteins from a complex mixture. The space of protein purification is vast. When you try purifying proteins without affinity tags, many techniques are required to separate the proteins based on physical or biochemical properties. This field is usually considered a subdomain of protein chemistry or biochemistry. Scientists use the word biochemistry colloquially to refer to laboratory techniques involving lysed cell samples. Protein purification is one such set of techniques. Size exclusion chromatography separates the proteins by size. Large proteins spend less time diffusing into the resin and elute faster. Often size exclusion is performed after affinity purification. The combination of these two methods is the most common way of making high purity protein samples. Anion and cation exchange separate proteins by size. Hydrophobic interaction chromatography separates the proteins that have hydrophobic residues on their surface. There are also some more specific resins like hydroxyapatite. This mineral of apatite and phosphate mimics nucleic acids and thus will sometimes selectively bind proteins that bind RNAs and DNAs. There are also non-chromatography methods. For thermostable proteins, you can separate them by boiling the cells. All the other proteins precipitate, leaving only the thermostable one behind. Ammonium sulfate cuts involve adding the salt to your sample, and different proteins will precipitate at different concentrations. If you have antibodies against your protein, you can cause your protein to aggregate and precipitate by reaction with the antibody. Finally, there is an electrophoresis page uh, which typically involves denaturing your protein, but it is sometimes possible to cut the band out of the gel, elute the protein, and re- There are techniques for isolating every component of the cell. For nucleic acids, there are variations on your mini-prep procedure that work for genomic DNA, plasmids, total RNA, small RNAs, and mRNAs. There are also methods for isolating soluble small molecule metabolites, lipids, and even carbohydrates.